Hey everyone, and welcome to my PlayStation 5 reveal event reaction video. You guys know that during E3 week, or rather would be E3 week, that I take the time to react to all the press conferences, releases and trailers, so on and so forth that are happening over the course of E3. However, this year is different. All summer long, we're gonna be getting events and trailers and sneak previews at a lot of different game companies and their titles across the board. And so everyone's been kind of wondering, What's going on with the PS5? We know what's up with the Xbox Series X. We are waiting to hear more about the PS5, and we're kind of also waiting for a Nintendo Direct at some point from Nintendo. This is the first big reveal at the PS5. We're gonna talk about the highs, we're gonna talk about the lows. More importantly, we're gonna talk about the hardware itself. The first game reveal we got was GTA 5 is coming to the PlayStation 5. Personally, I have not played GTA 5. I don't have any kind of nostalgia for it, even though it's you know, a couple years old now at this point. I think it's cool that Rockstar and PlayStation are honoring the fan base that's currently there because lo and behold, GTA 5 is still played online till this day. It's it's one of the most popular online games that people on Twitch and different communities are still playing and it's thriving. It's still going hard. Um, they're doing this promotion where every month until the release on PS5, PS4 players will receive $1 million of in-game cash for the online stuff. I don't know if that's a lot of money because I don't play the game, but it sounds like a lot. So kudos to that. If you're a big fan of GTA, uh, there you go. Now the first big game reveal we got was Spider-Man Miles Morales, which looks to be a either a sequel or a secondary story that goes alongside Spider-Man for PS4 that came out just a couple of years ago. It feels like yesterday we got Spider-Man and what a great game they ended up being. One of my favorite games of the year. Definitely a lot of people's favorite game. The combat is incredible. The graphics were wonderful. The music was so good. It's exciting to see that now with the Miles Morales storyline behind it. I love Miles Morales. I loved um, Into the Spider-Verse. And I think that, you know, this is a great launch uh, for the PS5. Considering that at the end of all this cool showcase of trailer, we did in fact get a benchmark release date. Rather, hopefully, for 2020 of this year. We'll see. I say it's a benchmark because it might change, but we'll see. Next up, we got a trailer for Gran Turismo 7. That's about it. All joking aside, uh, I'm not a big Gran Turismo guy. Realistic racers aren't necessarily my thing. I'm more of a Mario Kart-esque kind of guy. I will say, as someone looking in who has no knowledge of Gran Turismo up to this point in my life, I have seen my friends play them a lot, and I will say that I am not really impressed with the tech behind Gran Turismo 7 yet. I think that it will get there, or rather when we see more footage of it later on, it'll be in a better spot. As most of you know, all this stuff is in pre-alpha, so the footage is going to either look better or it's gonna look worse over time. Next up, we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This is super exciting. I love the Ratchet & Clank games. I'm slowly making my way through the series right now again, uh, but I recently did the first game on the original PS3 slash PS2, and I did the reboot on PS4 when that came out, and I loved both for their own different reasons. And Rift Apart uh, is one of those games that looks like it's designed for the PS5 in mind because you see a lot of particle effects, you see a lot of uh, quick action that's got a lot of quick loading and, and quick textures popping in and out really quickly. And I think kind of like Knack, for lack of a better term, uh, Ratchet and Clank is designed to showcase the power of the PS5. And so far, I'm pretty impressed. A lot of the games we're going to be talking about today have the same quality of a really cool narrative-driven trailer, not a lot of gameplay, or rather the gameplay that is there is not as direct as it should be or could be. And one of the first games to kind of live up to that is Project Athea, Pro Project Athea, Project Project Athea, I believe is the correct term, designed specifically for the PS5 as per the trailer states. It looks cool. I like what I'm seeing. Again, I don't have enough context to how the game fully plays, what the story really is. Looks cool, seems cool. Is it cool? Will it play well? No idea. Next up we have Stray, which is one of those Annapurna indie games that I think is always endearing. Annapurna is great about supporting indie developers who really put their heart and souls into games. Stray looks at a world in which robots have taken over, the humans are gone, and we have robots who are intrinsically connected to cats and so 
these cats and robots kind of respect each other and 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 work with each other and that's kind of all we have um i don't know if we play as the cats i don't know if we play as the robots i don't know if their enemies are friends they seem friendly but really we don't have enough uh, insight as to how the game plays or how it overall narratively connects then we take a quick break to focus on what i call marketing buzzwords and features for the ps5 things like ultra 4k blu-ray ray tracing high-powered solid-state drives, haptic feedback, adaptive triggers to the controllers, motion sensor, built-in microphones, 3D audio. This is all stuff that most tech people of our uh, community kind of know what they are. So it just seems like for everyone who's looking in who doesn't quite know those things, they really wanted to captivate them with cool 3D motion effects and cool theming to go along with it. And it works, you know? That's the kind of footage you want to see when you're at a kiosk at a game store or a, a big outlet store like Target or Best Buy, right? You want to see the appetizing CG thing in front of you, and it'll make you want to buy a PS5, hopefully, if those buzzwords get you. Next up, we have a new franchise called Returnal, uh, starring a woman who's an astronaut who's in space, on, or rather crash landing from space onto a planet, who basically dies and has to relive this loop of her crash landing on the planet and dying again and again. And you have to play the game to figure out what happened, why it keeps happening, and how to progress through it. We have a little tease of over the shoulder shooting. It seems like a third person shooter. That's great and all, but again, if you're gonna have a narrative driven story, either have it go full narrative and captivate me and, and don't give me any gameplay or go full gameplay with little narrative. And I think a lot of these trailers struggle to mix the balance between the two. I also think that Returnal is kind of a dumb name. I understand what it's trying to do, you know, Return, Eternal, Returnal, I get it. It's just kind of a dumb name. Either way, despite its dumb name, I'm willing to check it out. Sackboy A Big Adventure is exactly what it sounds like. To me, this comes off as a 3D Super Mario 3D World version of Little Big Planet, which I am totally A-OK -okay with. I love Little Big Planet. I love Sackboy. I love the world and the atmosphere and the characters. So to have a 3D platforming couch co-op approach to it, I'm all for it. Now, when I was a kid, I loved this PS1 game called Destruction Derby. It was really cool in that you just simple. You take your car, run to another car, you explode. Whoever lives is the winner. Pretty simple stuff. I'm sure it's a lot more mechanical than that. But... We saw a trailer for a game called Destruction All-Stars. Now, I don't know if they're connected, but the concepts are intrinsically the same. You have people in these really cool cars, you know, character versus character, crashing into each other, things exploding. I wrote down on my notes here, Hyper Mario Kart meets Fortnite. Now, it sounds kind of bad to say that, but the idea being the art style and the tone matches Fortnite, but uh, it seems like it has this Hyper Mario Kart gameplay where you crash into each other, you can get power-ups and hurt each other, if your cars explode, you jump out and, and try and commandeer another person's car or you avoid getting hit. It just seems like a lot of fun. It's, it has a lot of that um, uh, Rocket League vibe to it as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant because I want to see more. Again, one of the better trailers because it knows what it is. It focuses a lot on gameplay, a little bit of narrative to kind of tie everything together. But most of it is gameplay based. I'm a big fan of it. I'm all there for it. Next up, we have Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Uh, you have a, a, it looks like an action platformer with magic about a, a, a person named Kenna who has these cool little um, furry creatures that follow her around that she works with. I think she's trying to preserve them or, or really work with them and, and preserve nature. Again, narrative is kind of cryptic. But the gameplay, there's lots of it. It's action oriented. It's got some cool magic to it. It looks really, really cool. Again, even though it looks cool, I have no idea what's going on. So I'm going to be in that zone of cautiously optimistic. That's the secret tag of this video. Coptish, cop, cautiously optimistic. So Goodbye Volcano High, I feel, is one of the best trailers in this lineup because it knows exactly what it's trying to do. Tell a narrative with no gameplay. It's focusing heavily on what the story is, what these characters want, and it's going for that uh, coming of age, good feel, high school drama storytelling, you know, life is strange-esque, right? I, and I think it's important to know out the gate what you want to convey. Are you trying to convey gameplay? Are you trying to convey story? And I think 
Goodbye Volcano High does a good job of, of sticking to story. It's uh, a game that kind of focuses on these uh, dinosaur, reptilian, bird-like creatures, uh, but they're people. And it's very cartoon animated. Um, you know, I'm all for it. I think if you're going to have a really endearing coming-of-age story that's relatable and fun, you know, great. Let's do it. Put it in high school. Make make them dinosaurs. I'm, I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to go on that journey with them. Now, I'm not a big guy on the Oddworld series as much. I know Caddy and I talk about it quite a bit, but I'm just not really a big guy on it. However, I do love Lemmings a lot. I love that game from my childhood. You want to make sure that everyone is saved and that no one is hurt and you want to be the better person at the end of the day. When it comes to uh, Oddworld Soulstorm, it's essentially uh, Ames Odyssey and Oddworld meets Lemmings. You're trying to protect and save these, these people as you're trying to traverse through these crazy atmospheres. It's funny because... Uh, Lorne, the person who introduced the game trailer and the story beats before it kind of, he kind of emphasized that it's a game he's been wanting to make for a long time and that uh, it's rewarding and thrilling and exciting and hilarious. Uh, I got the exact opposite vibes from that. Not that it's like boring or gross or weird, but that it was actually kind of scary and that it was very serious and the, and the rewards are there for saving your friends, but... Um, I didn't get the hilarious vibe. The music was pretty intense, and, and what we saw was pretty intense. So Ghostwire Tokyo was a game that was introduced last year at E3, where all of us saw this really fun and energetic Japanese woman come out and talk passionately about Ghostwire Tokyo. And she was so fun and energetic that the internet was very adamant about protecting her from all dangers of the internet. She was so kind and so sweet, and everyone fell in love with her. And then she left the project. And we heard nothing about Ghostwire since, until today. So, Ghostwire Tokyo uh, features kind of a FPS perspective. Reminds me a lot of Bioshock, Mirror's Edge, and Dishonored kind of fused into one. The The gameplay seems very focused in, in action slash action horror, which I thought we were going to go more towards the horror side considering uh, the presentation and the trailers we got from last year. So, it's interesting to see kind of the pendulum go the other way this time around. Um, we did see a lot of gameplay, but with little context attached to it, which is okay, because it wanted to showcase what it was trying to convey on how to play, how to feel, and in the end, I'm not sure if I should be scared, but I definitely am intrigued to know what's going on. All right, now I want to be clear with this next game. I mean no disrespect to any developer who worked on it. This is not a slight against the game you made or, or the game you're working on. Because let's be real, this game looks beautiful. It's got great music. It's trying to narratively make me feel something and convey it, and I'm there for it. I just have one tiny problem. Is it Jet or Jet? J-E-T-F? J-E-T-T. Jet the Far Shore or Jet the Far Shore? Either way, uh, I love what I'm seeing. I love what I'm feeling. Once again, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having a good time. So if I remember correctly, Godfall uh, being published by uh, the guys over at Gearbox, this was teased and, and, and toyed with a little bit at the Game Awards last year, if I recall. I could be totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the Game Awards. The gameplay looks impressive. It looks like my kind of God of War, Devil May Cry, Monster Hunter, Souls, hack and slash combat game. The music was not the best fit. It was that like hip hop rock vibe. Not that I'm like in need serious Viking music to convey what's going on, but I, I, I guess to me, the music in your trailer for your game tells me if I should take the story of the game and take the beats of the trailer seriously or if I should just relax and have a good time. And I was relaxing, having a good time with the music, but the gameplay didn't match that. So, kind of confused on it. It looks tight. I'm, I'm ready to at least play the game and give it a shot. From the team that brought you Hyper Light Drifter, we've got Solar Ash, a floaty action platformer. Here's the thing. I love... Hyper Light Drifter. I'm so excited to see another game from those guys. 
and uh, it, the the floaty, beautiful flow of what these guys do uh, is very present in Solar Ash. I can't wait to check it out. So one game franchise that I have not dabbled in at all is because I hear so many mixed things across the board. The Hitman series. Some people say it's good, some people say it's bad, some of the games end up really good, some of the games end up really bad. I have no litmus test for this freaking thing. I have no idea. Uh, this was the first trailer that I've seen of a Hitman game that made me want to check it out. So they kind of advertise that this is the end of the World Assassination Trilogy. So I hope that's the case. I, I hope that it's not too late to learn what's going on because I've always thought the idea of Hitman is really cool. Agent 47 seems to be a really cool protagonist that I've, I'd love to get to know. Uh, if you guys are a fan of Astro Boy from the PS3 stuff, uh, there's that. A really cool thing. Real quick, check it out. Little Devil Inside is also a little cool medieval action game. Uh, I really dig the art style. Gameplay not for me, but hey, take a look at some gameplay. And of course, NBA 2K21, because I love sports so much. Look, I have nothing against these games that do the yearly thing. I just really miss... NFL Blitz, NBA Jam. Bug Snacks is the kind of game that I'd love to sit down with my girlfriend and play. The guys over at uh, that worked in Octodad, they're really fun. There's, they're re those guys are so good at making you feel like you're having a great time playing their games. And uh, Bug Snacks is it seems no different. The aesthetic is really cool. I love the fact that like you can sense that like everything looks delicious, is delicious, and seems delicious but you know there's a sense of dread kind of leaning into it. So the trailer I thought was very, very well executed, very, very fun. And I, I think at the end of the day though, I just don't know how the game plays 100%. So to me, I just gotta play, I gotta see more gameplay. I'd love to play to try it myself. Okay, so this next title is one that I think everyone on Twitter and on on, on Facebook and Reddit and even the, the YouTube live stream that I was watching was blowing up. Demon Souls, I think it's a remake. Look, Blue Point Games, thank you for all of your hard work. I don't know if you guys watch me, Blue Point Games, but let me be the first to tell you, you guys do incredible work. I'm sure someone's told you this, but you guys do fantastic work. The remakes and the remasters and the love and passion and dedication that your team puts into your projects is so palpable that you make people love to play games again and again and again. And Demon Souls, I never thought I'd get to see a remake in my lifetime. Here we are. I think it's going to be so awesome. You guys have made so many people happy just in this announcement alone. You know, uh, Bloodborne for PC can wait. I am ready for Demon Souls. So the studio behind the Dishonored franchise is making a game called Deathloop. And this is my kind of game. I love that there's this uh, this super stylistic approach to it. Very, very well done, well executed for a trailer. This is the kind of stuff that makes you want to go to the movies and watch, right? It's, it's great pacing, great action, great storytelling, great showcasing of the gameplay, explaining what's going on, making us care about the characters, making us care about the game loop. And I, I think overall, this was the game out of all of this that I didn't know anything about in advance. Obviously, no one did, right? But it was the kind of game where it was a roller coaster for me when I saw it, right? It was it was doing this the whole time, and I felt, you know, really engaged in what was going on. I love the fact that there's eight assassins that are a part of the loop that you have to take out. There's one assassin trying to kill you the whole time. And in between all of this is a story, is a narrative of trying to figure things out. And the point of the game is to die and die. And I love how the, the catchphrase is die, die again, is in try, try again. This game, look, Dishonored, incredible franchise, incredible game. Very, very excited to see what they do with this IP that they're making called Death Loop. Okay, probably my favorite trailer in the entirety of this conference uh, was for a game that was rumored, that I've seen leaks for, that I did not know if it was true or not, but the minute, the minute that it started, the minute I saw the panning and how it looked and the words, I knew that this was Resident Evil 8, or in this case, Village. Now look, I love Resident Evil. I love Resident Evil 7. I've had a completionist episode in the works on it 
for many, many years at this point. I'm stuck on a few RNG aspects. That's why I haven't done it yet. But I love where RE7 set up for the next title. I cannot wait to dig into this with the Scary Game Squad, boys. I need to know what's going on with Chris Redfield. What 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 are the intrinsic ties to Umbrella anymore at this point? Like, are, it seems like we're going back to the set of where Code Veronica took place. And if that's the case, oh god, that's so cool. That is so flippin' cool. Let's do it. I'm so excited. I will say the one thing about this trailer that did um, question my faith in it is that there are a lot better games with regards to look that were in this trailer compared to Resident Evil 8. I felt like it was a little low res. I felt like uh, it, it didn't live up to the Resident Evil standard. And that may have been just because, you know, they got to meet those deadlines and such, but I don't know. I, I don't think this game is ready. And they did say 2021. I, I hope they get there. So when I saw the trailer for Pragmata, I immediately thought this was the game that the writer of Dead Space was teasing. And I didn't look it up. I could be right or wrong. Let me see. So I looked it up and the writer of Dead Space deleted their tweet. But I thought based on this game right here, Pragmata, that this was the game that he was referring to. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, Pragmata, it gave me so many different vibes. I thought for a second it was a trailer for No More Heroes 3 because of the uh, astronaut from No More Heroes 2. I thought it was like a, a sneak peek a little bit of like uh, Last of Us. I, I felt so many ups and downs. I thought it was like Resident Evil at one point. Like it was, it was kind of confusing. Um, I wa and then it had a 2022 date. Out of, all, out of all of the games, this was the only one that had a 2022 date, which I, I thought their best option is instead of putting 2022, just put no date at all. Um, it looks very pretty. Uh, it was all cutscenes and and, and and glamour, but everything else I, I kind of got a little bit lost and didn't quite know what was going on. Last but not least, we had Horizon Forbidden West, which this is a hugely anticipated title. Um, you know, I, I completed Horizon Zero Dawn a couple of years ago and I had a wonderful time with it. I loved it so much. And immediately when I heard um, you know, actually talking. I knew exactly what it was. I, I heard her voice and I was like, this is Horizon. I'm so excited for it. It looks wonderful. I love the idea that that the planet is poisoned and corroding itself and there are people who want to help the planet, the people who want to hurt the planet. I, it's just, I cannot wait to visit, revisit this world again. I'm very excited for it. It still looks so good. I'm hoping that Gorilla can kick it up a notch with its graphical power with the PS5. So after all of this, we finally got a reveal of what the PlayStation 5 actually looks like. I love the look and how the controllers match the aesthetic of the console itself. It's interesting that there's two different types, one being a digital edition and one being a physical edition. So that to me means a couple of things, right? One, it really implies that if you're, if you're a traditional gamer, you can still go ahead and buy physical consoles and, and physical, rather physical discs, which I think is great. Um, the other side of the coin is for those who are on the go, who just want to have everything attached to their accounts, the, the digital version uh, is, is, is the way to go. So there's two different kinds of appeals to that. They showed off the HD cameras. They showed off the charge, the charge base. They, they overall, I, I like the look. I know everyone's been memeing about it looking like a router or a, or a cable modem. I disagree. I think it, it looks slick. It looks really cool. I love the way that it looks. But there's two glaring issues I have with this reveal event. And maybe I'm the only one. You guys send off in the comments down below. Let me know. But there's two glaring issues here that I want to point out. One, no price. No price. Here's the deal. Sony, you guys are the kings. Well, you used to be. Of, of getting the right price. The bombshell drop, right? When the PS1 was announced, you guys came out moments after Sega did their thing and were like, boom, here's the price and you crushed it. PS2, I thought it was aptly priced. You guys dropped the ball with the PS3 pretty hard because the architecture was expensive, overpriced, you guys struggled and you bounced back eventually. PS4, you guys were we're really conservative to matching Microsoft in their price range for the Xbox One. Why do we not have a price point yet? 
is what I want to know. Is it a matter of you're waiting to hear what Microsoft's prices are? Is it a matter of you don't know because the hardware is too advanced? I'd love to know. Personally, I think this is going... If, if the technology is as sound as Sony claims to be, I have a feeling that this console is going to be in the same price range as the PS3 was. So we're looking at a 599 model, maybe a 699 model. That to me is pretty expensive. I mean, I'm lucky that I can afford it. The second thing I want to talk about is the lack of discussion of backwards compatibility. Now, I know a lot of the people do not necessarily want to have backwards compatible uh, capabilities to their consoles nowadays. I personally love it, need it, and want it all the time. The minute that the Sony conference started with the PlayStation logo, I had hope that we were going to talk about that first because that was something that was sorely missed with PlayStation in the PS4. Microsoft took this on to themselves to really focus on that as a part of their business model for the Xbox One library going forward. And they have claimed that that's going to be their philosophies for the Xbox um, Series X going forward. So I'm hoping that Sony has some kind of comparable program in place to allow us to play our library of games from the PS1 to now. I know it's asking a lot, but you're talking... 20, 30 years of games. I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of, of buying the same copy of The Legend of Zelda Links to the Past on all my consoles. I love to just have it forever assigned to my account and just I'll pay a small fee of like 50 cents or a buck to like upgrade to the new console. Whatever it may be. I just want to keep bringing my library with me so I can preserve what I have and what I own. And I think that's a fair thing to want considering uh, how much of a collector I am. Do I expect uh, Aladdin for the PS1 to work on my PS5 in 4K? Absolutely not. Do I need that? Not necessarily. Uh, do I want that? Maybe. Maybe. You never know. So, those were my thoughts and reactions to the PS5 reveal event. Let me know what your guys' were in the comments down below. What was your favorite and why? And hey, if you like these videos, do me a favor. Hit the like button and genuinely leave me a comment because... I love making personal videos like this, and a lot of you guys don't necessarily like watching them. So I just want to try and get a good gauge going forward. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be confused as to why I had headphones on right now. That's because I was editing this video as we went. Guys, I've enjoyed The Completionist, and I'll see you on Saturday for a brand new video. Bye bye